Hello, welcome again to Happy in 15. Today's topic is about how IT management teams should actually use experience data. And to give a bit of context of what is usually the, the problem, let's first hear from uh, our customer Refinitiv before they started the journey with us. So our story started um, in October 2018 when I um, joined a group of our leaders uh, in, in Bangalore visiting one of our service providers. And I was asked upon the stage to talk about how services. Um, everyone else had these really glorious presentations and I was armed with nothing, uh, standing in front of 300 or so uh, of our service providers' staff looking down at me in the, with the lights on, uh, expecting me to talk about service. So yeah, I think that maybe brings us really nicely to the topic about, you know, what do I really show? Like, wh- what am I supposed to show towards different uh, stakeholders, different uh, business yeah. people? And uh, just to give a little bit of context to the, to the episode today, I think the three main topics we're going to go through is like decision making in IT management team, yep. <coughs> the cooperation with business, which is so important nowadays, but then also the third one, which is leading your IT delivery teams. Yeah. A lot of things for 15 minutes, so let's yes. crack on. Yeah, and I think this will be like a very high level thing to start the IT management team discussion. Then we'll do episodes really deep yeah. diving into each of these. But let's take this one first. So partner is saying that by 2025, 70% of digital business initiatives will require ISO leaders to report on business metrics from digital experience, up from less than 15% today. And this yeah. was 2020 in August. So yeah. What does that tell you? I kind of it, it tells an awfully lot because now if, if this is the operational leaders of IT, yeah. applications and, and services, it is if you can really say it might be even higher percentage that should be having this data to really make the decision. So yeah. Carver is believing in the same thing that we do that. Yeah, yeah. You need experience data for decision making. Yeah. But what do you see nowadays? Like what's the you know IT management team work and the metrics you know today? So, of course, typically IT has been doing decisions based on, of course, strategy of the company. Mm. So where they are heading and where, where we have to go and, and the challenge is coming from business. The other very traditional is cost. Yeah. So saving cost, making things more efficient, of course, that has been it. But what has been always the most challenging is the business value yeah. and what metrics to use for that. And, and I think experience is the one that we believe that should be the third one. Definitely. And that is... Yeah, what Cardinal is here as well saying. Yeah. But hey, again, to take us further, let's hear from, again, our customer Alström and uh, Dr. Azan. Happy Signals data is, is currently one of our key, uh, key data for all the IT management team members. So they all have access. They can see in multidimensional way uh, all the status for all services, for all locations, and uh, they have full access and it is now part of their uh, operational management activities. So in operational management uh, meetings that each service owner is having, they are also looking at the NPS for their respective service areas, yeah. not just the SLAs. So Sami, this brings us to our, our main thing that we, we talk here is the human-centric IT. Yeah. And our picture about people, processes, technology. Yeah, I think it's kind of a, and overall, when you think about the work in the management team, I think I'm asked quite often that who is responsible for the experience in, 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 in IT? Yeah. It's everybody. And, and when we look at this picture, of course, our role in the whole ecosystem of, of IT is, is we are people-centric and we are the ones can bring the data about how people feel about the services. Of course, you need the other technologies and, and, and all those tools that you need for processes and, and monitoring and whatever to understand what is going on in the organization and lead that part. Yeah. But whatever changes you do in IT, it might be even be the huge changes like digital transformation and moving to cloud and, and doing big ERP projects. They are all changing the experience of your end users. Yeah. And if you don't have the people part of these three traditional ones, people, process, technology, mm. Uh, you are going to lose it because you are not understanding what is going on. On So you really have to understand the business and the people in it. And I think probably traditionally you have had like a variety of all these technology measurements. You know all the availabilities and all these. You have multiple process metrics. And then maybe you only have like one CSAT or one score. 
Yeah. And I think like like Dr. Osan said that you need to have it in multi-dimensional way. Yeah, okay. So maybe going through <coughs> examples like like what does that mean? Let's say that you you ha- have like a digital transformation project or something like that ongoing. Yeah, I think it's a the traditional way has been like those yearly surveys, but that doesn't help you in any in running those change operations. And it it is impossible to get KPIs for for people that are running those changes. So you are doing changes monthly and second month that continuously you are changing yeah. the service for your end users. Yeah. And if you only measure once a year, uh, you don't have a clue what happened in between. So the team working on cannot react to any changes in the expiration and learn. Yeah. And I think that's the kind of the very often the missing part. Yeah. And I think like if you think about automation, because you're usually missing that that people metric on it, then you start automating technological things, process things. But actually, I think what you should really automate are the things that your end users are doing, yeah. not what your IT is doing. Yeah, don't, don't automate your IT work, automate things for the end user. Yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> All right, but maybe we move to kind of the, from, from how the management team works with the decision making, maybe we next discuss about how, how this data is important in the discussion with your business. Yeah, and again, you know, I think let's go and uh, hear from uh, from uh, Dr. Osan. The businesses were telling us that, uh, especially in the in the management meetings, uh, one of my business area uh, leader, the executive, was telling me that Osan, we don't feel that uh, you really care about us. That yeah. was the message I was yeah. hearing. Uh, and then you know, with happy signals, uh, we have also shown them that we really started listening them i mean it's not just the uh, fcrs fprs or you know mean time to resolution those yeah. etl type of things that we follow uh, they started saying they started feeling that we didn't listen to them we started listening to them yeah uh, and that that changed the culture i mean now for example in our quarterly business reviews uh, with our ceo uh, nps is always a topic I mean, NPS is is one of the metrics we we look at on on CEO level. So, Sami, that brings to our our topic of humans are the best sensors, and and like you many times say that it's not just like think about one individual end user, think yeah, about yeah. all the thousands and the different sections and the di- you know different user groups and, and so on. Yeah. Look at this picture. Like there is all the areas what what IT is 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 offering for the normal end user of the of the business, yeah. and this is not only one guy in the management team that is responsible of this whole thing. Yep. There are many people that are, some are delivering some application, ERPs or whatever, on the table, some are handling the support services. Yep. But it all creates the overall experience of an end user. And and when you take this end user, not maybe one individual, as you said, mm. you take and think about uh, like the sales guys, yep. the guys in our, the pilots. Yep. And when you then meet business and go there, quite a proactive message that, okay, pilots are very happy with these applications, but these are not working in as expected. Support services at the end of month is a problem because of this and that. You can go to meet business stakeholders in a totally new way. You are not going there reporting that yes, service should be up and running. And yes, we handle thousand tickets per month. Yeah, and I have this example. Yeah. My friend works in a, in a large German automotive <coughs> company and, uh, and uh, his, his uh, employees were complaining that we can't do our work with this this uh, ERP system that we are having. It's too complicated. And then he has, has a call to his friend, the, 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 the IT director. And the IT director said, well, you know, all the uptimes, everything is fine. Mm-hmm. And he was like, like seriously, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you that my people cannot work. Yeah. And, uh, and I guess that's really the, the key here that you can go to the business and say, hey, we feel that here is the problem. Do you agree looking at the data? This is what your employees are saying so to us. As an IT yeah. management, you cannot do your work if your business doesn't trust you. Yeah. And if, if you are not able to understand, as Osan said, that was a scary message in the beginning that the business directly said that you don't care about us. Exactly. It was like, yeah. But then if you go there and you say that, okay, we have some problems, yes, yeah. but we know them, yeah. a much better message and much easier f- with the business to focus on the areas. Yeah. And then the other thing, what comes back to the decision making, then you have the cost aspect. Yeah. Yeah. You can compare, okay, what is the cost of the experience? Because of course in ID dynamics, you always have the cost effect. Yeah. 
Of course. Yeah. But you have limited budget. Your business wants to use your budget in a way that it creates most value. Yeah. So you should have this cost and 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 experience as a decision making. And it's the way that we had uh, with the Campari Group CIO saying that yeah. that his his uh, goal is that he can have the conversation with the CFO, asking that how much money do you want me to spend to create yeah. these experiences, yeah. not well, the other way around. And, and yeah. If you look at this this now we are talking about the best sensors and, and a human as a sensor here, but yeah. you have these different areas of IT when you have the experience of all of these separately. Yeah. And then you compare that to your business plan, your next roadmap, your investments. Yep. That is a quite interesting discussion that should yep. be, be focusing more on this one because yep. we are lacking in experience. Yep. And then many times it's the IT people who are skeptic about this. True. Can we trust what people say? Again, I'll, I'll give it to Dr. Osan and let's then continue from that. We look at the situation, no judgment, no nothing. I mean, because it, Feelings never lie. I mean, people people tell you always the truth. The end users tell you the truth. You need to, to listen to them and you need to care about it. Yeah, and this is what we always say that, you know, people feel. Yeah. They, they, they feel and they try to get their work done. There's no motivation for them to, to lie about their feelings. Yeah, and of course their, their expectation changes during time. Yeah. And IT's task is not to lower the expectation and say that this is what we have promised to deliver, yeah. it is to understand how that changes and why that changes. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, there are a lot of things that we exactly. could talk about that yeah. different cultures and so on. Yeah, but this was the, the second topic, which was like cooperation with the business. So now if yeah. you can align with business, that that's w- this is where you should focus. It takes us now then to the third topic, which is about, you know, how do you lead your IT delivery teams? Yeah. Of course, you use that information, that, hey, now we agree that this is the thing that we need to improve. So then you can align them. Again, aligning people is really important. And yet once more, I'll give it to Dr. Rosan. That is really what uh, happy signals uh, brings us. Because with happy signals, all the parties, all the IT departments, all the IT vendors, IT partners, they all see the same thing. And they, they, then there is no doubt and there is no confusion. There is no discussion. So it brings us to our IT experience management framework where we have this measure, share, identify, improve. Mm-hmm. And I think this topic really highlights the sharing part and the identifying part. Because when you give that data to everybody transparently, mm-hmm. your business taker agrees that's the problem, your IT delivery teams agree, your vendors agree, then they can start to identify what the real problems are that we need to fix to mm-hmm. actually improve things. Uh, and then you as a customer to those vendors, you can really demand them to give you a proactive service yeah. because they have understood what are the real problems. Yeah. And then the cooperation is, is cooperation. It's not that you have to order something and just get something and see, okay, does it fit? Yeah. But they can innovate yeah. based on real problems. Yeah. And I guess, again, if we can take the one story from our customer, uh, the CIO who started, you know, the service owner came to, to his room and he asked, so how is your service doing? and they couldn't answer, so he just opened the, the real-time reporting and click. well, let's click on your service and let's look. Yeah. The next time the service owner came, he knew exactly how the service is doing. Yeah, yeah. I think so this guy really did a kind of a great start in the, his career in that company in three months, whenever meeting own people or partners, yes. he had the same question, and, and that how he kind of started to change the whole IT organization to be more kind of yeah. a data driven. And I remember that they actually have had a new CEO starting and they had this like C-level management kickoff th- thing. And at some break he showed from the from the mobile device, hey look, this is how we measure the experience that we are having. And after the break, the CEO started that, yeah, actually, you know, I just realized that all of you talking to HR and all the other services, yeah. you should run your services like IT does, yeah. you know, measuring the, the customer. Yeah, the value, 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 value. Yeah, but, yeah. but I think in, in overall when it comes to how important experience is and how I would say it's even easy to run your your yes. development teams and your own teams with the experience because it's so concrete, it is motivating, they are now helping people, they yeah. are solving real problems, they are not just doing some operations or delivering something yeah. without meaning. Exactly. So I think one thing is that now looking at the whole cycle here, whatever project you have, whatever mm product change, whatever vendor change you have, you have the baseline and then you should be setting the target after three months of using this product, we should be on this level. Yeah. 
and following that up continuously is really motivating. Yeah. All right, but hey, I hope you liked that episode. And if you get inspired of how IT management teams work, you know, you can always reach out to me or Sami or, you know, challenge us. And like I, like I promised, we'll uh, dig deeper into this topic in, in coming episodes. But yeah, as we usually say, uh, stay happy and stay safe.